Yo, what is up? Welcome to Science HD. You clicked on the video. Congratulations. Next step, go grab a snacky snack. Enjoy the rest of the ride because you're about to watch a past live stream of Science HD. My name's Nolan. Rose is my co host. Almost always. Sometimes I'm alone, sometimes not. So, thank you for checking us out and uh, check the link bio and links in the bio and descriptions of videos and enjoy. Yo, what is up? It's Science HD. <laughs> um, welcome back. We are having a good episode. It's episode. We're having a good episode tonight of the Solo Science HD. I am your host, Nolan. And uh, thank you to the resub from Frisky TV in the chat. Appreciate that. A couple announcements before I get into things is there's this chair behind me. And as you can see, there's some rocks on it. I've got this rock. And uh, I've got this rock. And then I have four others that are all geodes, if you could not recognize that when I was showing that. So if you want to see us crack that open, um, if you want to see those get smashed live, just to see what's inside of it, because they're unopened by man and unseen by humans, um, if you want to see that, uh, you want to be the first person to see it, season finale of Science HD. Yep, season finale of Science HD. It's going to be on Sunday. Sunday. So, uh, yeah. This Sunday. I'm going to get a date real quick on that. That's, uh, that's August 21st, 2022. Science HD Season 1 Finale. So, I, we're calling it the finale because we don't know when we're going to do the next episode of Season 2, I guess. But what I want for Season 2 is guests because we'll actually have guests because we'll be at school and we'll have access to more guests in person but also new people that we could ask like professors or whatever so definitely guests and then uh more hands-on stuff and then we're also going to be talking about more school stuff because well not like the boring parts of school don't worry but we're going to talk about like good school stuff because uh we're going to be at school so um yeah that's season two. A lot more in-person things because Rose and I um, will see each other a lot more in person. So it's going to be great. Um, thank you for another resub in the chat. Uh, you 23 power 10 months. I appreciate that. That's a long, that's a long time. I think you're the longest tenor, tenured, whatever. You know what I mean? But anyways... Um, without further ado, let's get this, let's get this, uh, let's get this slideshow popped up here. Three, two, one, let's go. Slideshow has popped up there. And, uh, I've made some interesting slides today because <clears throat> I did some stuff that I'm just like, okay, I have a question. I want to answer it. I'm going to look into it, and then I'm going to say my question and answer on Science HD. So then I have one that's like, this thing looks weird. I've always wondered about this. Well, thank you, Agathon, for a resub. There's a lot of resub. We're, all the resubs are coming out tonight. It's crazy. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. Nice bow tie upgrade. So I've picked up segments that I'm like, okay, this thing looks weird. Okay, this thing sounds weird. Okay, how does this happen? And this thing looks funny, but I already knew this, but I want to make sure everyone knows this. So, um, I, mean, I guess I could say I'm getting flamed in the chat, but people are just calling me nerds, and I feel like that's not a, uh, what is it called? It's not a, opposite of a compliment, insult. There we go. Yeah, so, unless you're calling me the candy. I'd rather be like the actual thing than the candy, by the way. Spork. But anyways, um, 
I appreciate everyone that's resubbing. That's awesome. I love it. And uh, y'all look great. Yeah, nerds are awesome. I think we can all agree that nerds are awesome. So uh, just in case if y'all are just now tuned in, I don't know if you heard, but Science HD season finale is on a Sunday night at 9 p.m. And we're going to be smashing like five geodes because that was like very popular. And we love doing it. And I got some free ones from my sister. Shouts out to Madison. Also, also shouts out to Rose's dad, whose birthday is today. Yay. Yay, birthdays. So, birthdays. That's why Rose isn't here. She's celebrating. That's great. Um, also, it's Wednesday. It's because I was busy yesterday. So, thanks for everyone adjusting accordingly. And, uh, yeah. I don't know when the next season's day is going to be but we'll figure it out so anyways i'm spending a long i'm spending too much time talking about the future and whatnot let's talk about the present and the past technically um because everything's in the past but here we go this is not a pokemon but it looks like one because i've picked the segment this is like the part two of this segment i swear i've done this before it's called funky looking because this thing is funky looking all right that was the end of the segment funky looking thank you <laughs> just kidding it does look it, it this could be a pokemon on some level like at least the structure of the face <laughs> sorry i've been feeling a little uh thank you for the bits agatha and there's the resub from Asparagus. Wow. Um, thank you for the resub. I turn off all the things because it's going to go on YouTube. And I don't want YouTube to get spammed. But we have our very first hype train um, on this channel. This is, the, this is the first hype train on this channel. And so that can't go unnoticed. And I appreciate it. Sorry I'm not jumping up and down. Here. Hype train. Uh uh trigger warning if if flashing lights bother you hype 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 <laughs> hype 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 sign hey wait i know what i know it kid uh no copyright hype 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 thank you there everyone's showing out tonight um i feel like i'm doing an outro when i speak over this thing we, we love everyone. Um, I gotta get more Science HD emotes for those subs. Much appreciated. I appreciate y'all. I appreciate y'all. It's good hype train. Yeah. Yeah. Now. Back to uh, this thing. Whatever this thing is. I'm just kidding. I know exactly what it is. So, sorry, I work at a zoo, right? And, uh, I, wor I work at a zoo, and, um, there's a mural of a bunch of animals, and this is one of them, and I'm like, why do they, they painted the animal, like, to have its nose, like, really rounded out. I was like, that can't be right. Looked it up, I was like, oh my god, they nailed it. And look at that thing. That thing is so, like, almost, it's almost ugly, but it's not ugly, because it's kind of cute. It's ugly cute. It's a cute ugly um, so I was like, okay, I got to talk about this or I at least got to look it up for myself. And now I want everyone to know that it exists because I forgot that I did a segment with a proboscis monkey. Um, and it looks very similar with a funky looking nose. And, uh, I just want to, I just want to tell everyone about this Saiga antelope, S A I G A antelope. Now this is the weirdest looking antelope on planet earth. Uh, for obvious reasons. I mean, look at that thing. And then, these guys don't live in Africa, like a lot of antelope. They don't live in North America, like the pronghorn antelope. They live in Asia. Like the... There's probably at least one other antelope in Asia, but I can't think of any. So, Asia. They live in Asia. And, uh... They're critically endangered, man. It's not good. There used to be millions of them roaming around, and then start getting hunted and then 
there's disease and they're now down to thousands so i, I know i'm saying this with like an upbeat voice but it's actually really sad <laughs> it's actually really sad um there was once millions of dollars only thousands so let's uh save the saga baby hashtag save the saga um now i want to talk about that nose of theirs now that we got the big uh elephant in the room out of the way i guess i want to talk about that huge nose of theirs this this uh nose looks kind of pointless to me it just looks like it goes all the way up to here on their head it looks like it's just two channels that go all the way up to here well i don't know about much about the structure on the inside of their nose but i know the uses of it so like this nose is ugly. <laughs> sorry to, sorry to give it to you like that, Saiga. But yeah, this nose is, uh, to me, it's like not the prettiest. But it's meant to help warm up air when it's breathe when it's inhaled. So this thing survives through hot summers and harsh winters. I think it actually grows a thicker coat in the winter, and uh, the nose helps warm up the in, the cold inhaled air now in the summer it helps filter off the dust in the air so like so like this thing is filtering out dust but it just looks like an elephant had a baby with an antelope somehow and uh that's what came out like it's literally just all antelope except for the face it's weird, but, um, it is, it's weird. It's really, I don't know. Um, so there is also evidence that these noses help choose mates. And I don't know if they mean sexually dimorphic, which what that means is, I'll give you an example to make it easier. Orangutans, the males have a huge face plate looking thing. Whereas, hold on, there. So orangutans have this huge faceplate, right? Whereas the females just kind of look, I would say, normal, but they don't have the faceplate. They just look like an ape, like a regular ape. No way. You know what I mean? That is sexual dimorphism. For some reason, the males having that faceplate attracts more females. And yeah, peacocks. The males are pretty. Um, the females are, to us, are just like more bland in color. So that's sexual dimorphism as well, where the males have pressure to look prettier and stuff like that. So it's interesting as crap, and it's fun to look at. And I don't think that's what this is because both the males and the females have the same thing. So I don't think it's sexual dimorphism, but it could still help attract because usually when there's a weird shaped thing on an animal like that when there's a weird shaped thing on there it's it's usually helps resonate noise so uh a dinosaur called parasolophilus um might have said that wrong because it's a hard word to pronounce but i think i got it it's the dinosaur that has the horn that goes all the way back there's one now a lot of them are just, it's not really a horn, but it's like just bone structure that goes all the way back. And uh, you might be like, why does it have that? Or it doesn't really look like it's that good at for fighting. It might be like blunt force, but it's not like that but the best for fighting. It's for resonance of calls. They, they were herd animals. They always called out to each other, um, or at least we think they did. And so... It was for calls like that. It's crazy how sometimes animals' bodies are just shaped differently for noise. Or at least one, that's one of the main uses of it. So it's most likely used for communication as well. They probably sound weird. I'm actually going to go look up what they sound like because I'm curious. And I did not put a video of... I'm, actually, I'm looking this up real time. I did not put up a video of it, so 
Once I get past this four second commercial, I'm gonna do, uh, I'm gonna listen to, we're both gonna listen to. Oh, hell no. <laughs> okay, so that's exactly what I thought it would sound like. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's a Saiga antelope and that's exactly that's that's what it sounds like i want to see it i want to see that thing yell it did not have a video of it yelling it just had a um sound so yeah saiga antelope they're being overhunted and they have disease going on so that's why they're critically endangered super it's getting a more rare animal which is not good but it is super nasally that's a great that's a great uh point out agathon that is that is very nasally i realize that so yeah but uh i guess the cool thing with these guys is they're really good at migrating they like migrate um 50 to 75 miles a day so and they can run up to 50 miles per hour so i guess that's cool i mean they're weird but it's cool it's i so yeah uh, horns, man. They've got horns. Now, oh, one thing I wanted to point out is that when antelope have horns like that, I don't think that's a good way of telling age, whereas some people think that's how you tell age. Like, let's see. If you look at the picture I have right here, there's an antelope with horns. I'm counting them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 years old. Um... That's probably that's probably close. It's a good way to estimate, and it's probably and it could be accurate as well. But I think sometimes they grow more rings in one year than uh, they grow more than one ring in a year. Sometimes I'm not sure though, so I wouldn't age a horned animal with rings. But all the horned animals, or at least the majority. Have, grow rings on their horns so interesting blow dryer germs this is the one this is what this is the one i want to talk about i mean i want to talk about all this but this is the one i wanted to be the main event that's why i put it second because usually it's like all right people are coming in people are warming up people are warming up now that i grabbed your attention with an ugly animal well not ugly it's actually kind of beautiful I'm roping you in. I'm pulling you in, man. I'm pulling you in, and now we're sticking around for blow dryer germs. Now, a lot of people, mainly my close friends, and Rose, Rose calls me this because she's closer than my close friend. A lot of people might consider me a germaphobe. I'm, I, I don't. I want to defend myself real quick before you hop on their side, because if I say that a lot of people call me that, you would probably think, yeah, that you're probably a germaphobe. I think I'm germ conscious. I'm not a germaphobe, I'm germ conscious. Cause if you really bet me to do like lick this table in front of me, I probably would lick it. Um, but if it was your table, I don't think I'd lick it. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, um, lick my phone i don't think i'd even lick my own phone to be honest because i know how much crap is on this um that's like the difference here it really seems stupid but yeah it's like there's some no-nos and then there's some like okay ones but my phone is sitting on my table so it doesn't make any sense a lot of times my own mind contradicts myself but i am germ conscious not germophobic a good example of me being germ conscious would be uh, inspecting my silverware before I use it. I always check it. It's like second nature to me. I don't even notice I do it anymore. Um, a five second rule. I don't do it. If it it's, if it's on the ground, it's on the ground, man. It's done. I've seen some people pick, pick something right up. If it's like super dry and it doesn't really get stuff stuck to it and it's on like my carpet... Sure, but if it's like a fruit snack that I've already bitten half of it off, and then it gets on the car, no, nope. So that's just, I want to gauge that. Now, a, week, a couple of weeks ago, I think, um, 
there was a couple of weeks ago, there was this picture that went viral, I think. I never actually saw the picture until t like today, but I kept seeing in the comments on TikTok, people say, oh, we must have seen that blow dryer or that air, not blow dryer, hand dryer video. Yada, yada. I, okay, I want to go back. I did not bite a fruit snack in half. I've never done that. And no one really does that. But that's my example. Something sticky like that. So I just wanted to throw that out there. Hackathon. Sorry. Yeah, whatever. Also, going back to your comment even more. I did talk about C. diff the other week. Maybe even last week. I did. Um, with poop. So. No, I didn't want to get C. diff. But anyways. Back to where I was. I don't remember exactly where I was because I have short-term memory, I swear. Regardless, germs are everywhere. I saw this video of people keep talking about, oh, we must have seen the hand dryer video. I'm like, I don't even know what that video was. I didn't even try looking up the video. I'm just like, that's what I'm talking about, baby. That's what I'm talking about, baby. Because like five years ago, maybe even like six years ago, my mom has a friend who studied this in high school, I don't know, like microbiology or something. I don't know. I know someone, or I to was told a while ago, that to never use hand dryers. And then my mom's told me this, I think. And I'm like, why? And then her friend was like, because I like did like a study or I read a research paper in, in college, something like that, along those lines, where... There is so much bacteria that lives within those hand dryers and they spit it all onto your hands. And that sounds like it's a conspiracy at first. And this is where all the people that are not germaphobes or germ conscious come to attack me and my kind. Um, <clears throat> sounds like a conspiracy theory, but it's now becoming viral based off of this picture. Well, first of all, here's the... Here's the hand dryer at uh, that they're sa talking about that we're about to get into. This is like the best hand dryer I've ever seen in my life. And I actually feel like this is the cleanest one. The ones I feel like actually do the thing that we're about to talk about are the, the older ones in my mind. But apparently it's coming from this one too, a Dyson Airblade. And these are like the best ones because it literally feels like a blade of air. And I love it so much. But regardless... This is what we're talking about. This is a Petri dish of a really gross crap on the inside of fungus and bacteria. Now, supposedly, I don't know if this was in a video or not, but this is a picture that went viral. And supposedly that this was swabbed or just taken the air molecules of a hand dryer. And it's... Uh, kind of disturbing that I'm like in the chat right now on Twitch. I'm reading the word omelet. Can't get that out of my head. Good thing I don't like omelets to begin with. But if that meal was ruined for you, I'm sorry. But uh, yeah, so apparently there's this teacher, right? I'm saying apparently because of course I don't have this 100% confirmed because who knows? She could have swabbed this from anything. But apparently there's this teacher who has a class and they all swab things. She chose to, the teacher herself chose to swab a hand dryer or just take the air molecules. Couldn't really tell by the way it was worded. Um, but after 48 hours, this is what the Petri dish looked like. Um, yeah, that's disgusting. <laughs> and so the results from the other Petri dishes did not come back like this. And so she posted it and apparently went viral with like 500,000 shares. And uh, yeah, so this isn't like a super official science-y way of um, putting stuff out there, but it's a quick way of putting stuff out there. Because if this was, like, superficial, you would need to do more than just one Petri dish, probably. And you would probably need to make an official research paper for this, too. Like a scientific method type beat. 
So, um, but just posting a picture and saying, hey, this is from a Dyson is apparently good enough for mass society. But here's the, here's the why you need a research paper to back it all up because research papers usually have trials, they have sample sizes, they've got data of all sorts, and they've got technique and evidence, and most importantly, evidence to show the company that they're going against. So Dyson actually is clapping back and saying, yo, we don't know if how accurate this is, but we ensure our peoples, peoples being everyone, that they are hygienic hand dryers proven through university research. So now Dyson's being like, oh, we actually have university research. So what I'm telling you guys that they, this person needs. And yeah, reading an article or two and not actually looking at research papers because if I really wanted to legit do this I'd look at research papers around hand dryers from actual researchers rather than just like news outlets but the news outlets reference some research papers and apparently there's research papers on both ends of the stick so there's some that are like hand towels or paper towel and hand dryers are actually roughly the same and hand dryers are actually really bad. And then hand dryers are not that bad. So I'm just like, I don't know. There's This is like one hand dryer, first of all. There's many problems with this not being the scientific method. And it bothers me. And then reading on how much variation in results there are, it leaves me thinking this. There are probably some cases where this is hand dryer and it probably is a hand dryer stuff, but um, it probably depends on how bad your bathroom is. Like if your bathroom's absolutely ass, then it's going to probably look like that. Yeah. Even if you do the floor, it's probably going to look worse. Like bathrooms themselves are like big ass Petri dishes. And part of my French, uh, yeah, I hate bathrooms. Like they're disgusting. I, I'm like germ. I never want to touch anything. Sometimes I don't even flush because I'm like ew. I don't want to touch the handle. And here's while I'm here, let me sit you down. Let, I, sit down real quick. Take a swig with me. I'm gonna read the chat in a second, but I want to get this out to the world. If, okay, if you own a bathroom, if you're an owner and you have the ability to manage your bathroom and choose what's in it, please never get an automatic soap dispenser and please never get an automatic, well, actually get an automatic soap, get an automatic soap dispenser. Great. But if you do, please never get a non-automatic sink. If you're going to get automatic anything, get an automatic sink. Here's why. Germs. Let's imagine they're everywhere, like the most toxic. You don't want to die. If you touch it, you die. Unless you wash your hands. All right. I just went to the bathroom. I'm going to go wash my hands. Oh, okay, cool. I have to turn on the sink with my hand. Oh, no, I have deadly things. But good thing I have automatic soap to wash it off. Boom, it's all washed off, done. Now I'm going to go put my hand on the one thing that I touched that has that nastiness on it to put it down. Why in the hell wouldn't you just get an automatic sink? Because if I put my hand on the soap, I'm actually just washing it off right there. Like, it's, it's so annoying. And I feel like I'm the only person that talks about this. And... <clears throat> I'm glad the automatic sinks are coming in and automatic soap. That's great. But please don't get the soap first. It doesn't make any sense. It just doesn't make any sense. Save up your money for an automatic sink, dog. You know how many germs you'd be saving? You don't even need automatic soap. You don't need automatic soap. 
Period. All right, I'm going to go read the chat because there's a few things. So, Did you say how many hand dryers were tested from the article? Just one? I did not say, um, but they probably just did one, and they need to do at least 100. Okay. Wouldn't that just mean this that this one location does a bad job of cleaning and disinfecting their equipments daily? That's precisely my point. Are the bacteria inside the dryer the worst ones on the wall next to it? Oh, that's a good question. I like that. Okay. Um, science. In the most HD. I have a short slow-mo video you could show for a science HD at the end as well if you're interested. I am a little interested. That's very vague, but what is it? I really don't want it to be like beheadings or something. Have you seen that hand dryers that slice people hands off because people tamper with the safety? No. That better not be the slow-mo video. See that? That's why I'm afraid to watch a video from you guys and burn because this slicing people hands off crap, I'm not able to show. <laughs> Ugh. So, uh, yes. Where was I? I was on that, like, why would you get the automatic soap thing? Yeah. Anyways, I really do think that both results of paper towel and hand dryers being the same and hand dryers being the absolute worst thing to use are both probably have the correct, um, or not correct, but well-supported evidence behind it because it, I think it depends on your bathroom and how often it gets dif disinfected and how well it gets disinfected. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I think it just comes down to how clean the bathroom is. So, yeah. Uh, how I use the bathroom is I go to the bathroom, I wash my hands, and I wipe it off my shirt. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I feel like that's not that great. I actually feel like that's pretty bad, too, but I don't really care. It makes me feel better at night, knowing that that omelet's not on my hands. So, Yeah. All right, I'm going to read the chat again. The slow-mo video is me at work breaking a light globe. It's high-pressured, so it explodes. Slow-mo. What is it in? Is it in... Oh, it's in, it's in general. I'm going to read, I'm going to watch this. What job do you have? Okay. Type in chat what job you have, or at least like what you do. Not, not like where you do, but at least what you do. And I'll put it in at the end or something. Or I'll do it right now. He recycled glass. Boom. That's good enough for me. Let's do it right now, dude. Science. Mm. HD. Science. Mm. HD. Science. Featuring gas and burn. All right. You ready? You ready, gas and burn? You ready? Unsupported image type. You guys are getting all behind the scenes right now. Oh, well, that's an image. Aw, oh, man. Hold on. Why is the video not? Save video? How do I save? The I don't know how to do this. I'm, I'm pressing. It's saving it as an image. It's saving your video as an image, dog. I don't know why it's doing that. Well. Never mind about that. I guess I could uh, screen record, but it's a little. Here we go. I could screen record. This is a little uh, interruption in the daily scheduled program. But I could do it. I could do it. Watch. Watch this. I'm a dog that works on the fly. A few counts gonna go down, but I that's all right. If the real ones will stay, I'm fine with that. So let's watch a video of gas and burn breaking something in slow mo. So I don't even know what that is in your hand. Whoa! Shit! Oh my god! 
I gotta look at that one again. Why did it do that? What is that? You're gonna need some more explanation behind that. You are for real gonna need some more explanation behind that, sir. A, I have some questions for you. A, why? <laughs> B, how? And that's it, actually. Just why and how. When doesn't really matter. I just want to know why and how. That's all. Now, my next segment is I don't want another sacrifice. No, no, please take another sacrifice. I don't want another sacrifice. It's a Madagascar 2 reference. Which my, uh, I don't want to offend anyone, but my, I don't know if my current audience has even seen Madagascar 2. Although I shouldn't be talking because I don't watch many movies. Um, yeah. The badges do look cute, Pizza Tucks, by the way. So thank you for making them. They look great. And everyone's rocking some awesome ones, so. I don't want another sacrifice. Let's see if anyone understands this. And then let's go to, to Gas and Burn and then start this next sacrifice uh, segment. Is this a movie? You know about a movie? Yes, it's a movie. Madagascar 2 Escape from Africa. So what Gas and Burn was breaking was a high-powered light globe. They're using the side of hard plastic safety case. I'm sorry, but that's not. It doesn't seem too safe. They provide a lighter glow for industry buildings. I think they're just extremely high pressured inside. So it must be a closed system. It must be a closed system. There's images of it if you just want to look at the sweet. So you just are you just have to break shit. I'm to, I'm totally bringing my profanity today. That's crazy. I know some older folks watch me. I'm sorry. Um, so you just break stuff that's made out of glass and recycle it. Do you melt it down? I'm so curious about this. This is cool. Because I like recycling, man. Recycle. 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 Please recycle out there. So anyways. Um, oh. He breaks glass. To put it through a filter that sucks out the mercury. And then you send off the glass to be turned into garden bricks. Why would you make a brick? Why would you make a glass brick, first of all? What is this, Minecraft? Bruh? What is this, Minecraft, dog? <laughs> uh, my apologies to the people watching on YouTube. I'm reading chat, but I'm doing my best. Uh, if you're a avid watcher or viewer, you should, have, you should know Gas and Burn by now because he's... He's always tuning in. I'll send a photo of one of the bricks. Interesting. Okay, for the last time, I'm actually going to focus up real quick and get this next segment on. This next segment is a reference to Madagascar 2. And in Madagascar 2, we see one of our favorite characters of all time, King Julian and Maurice. But King Julian is... An awesome guy. And he's a ringtail lemur. Now, I don't remember the next slide, but I'm going to try setting it up for it. So, ringtail lemurs are amazingly cute. I, If I were to have any primate as a pet, it'd be probably be a ringtail lemur. And actually, I don't want to... Um, I don't want to, uh, promote exotic animals like that, but if you get them while you're, you're, while they're young, they're actually not the worst exotic pet to have of course, for a primate, I should say, but don't do that because no one could take care of a primate, dude. It's so much work, I feel like, and a lot of people get rid of them because it's so much work. So I don't even have to have one and no, um, so yeah. Anyways, King Julian. His species in real life do some interesting things. Um, in the comment section, we're getting 
Is it like a zo Zubumafu? Zubumafu is not the name of a lemur, but or species of a lemur, but I think it was the name of the lemur on the show, Zubumafu, which was a real lemur, but also a puppet. And they changed them intermittently. And uh, that was not the same species of lemur. It was a different one. I think that was the... I think that was a rough lemur. That one. Zabumafu. Regardless, lemurs are awesome. They are not monkeys. They're primates. And they're amazing. Because they kind of are like... They kind of they kind of have their own it like kind of looks like they have their own religion sometimes. <laughs> I know that's like a weird thing to say, but it kind they kind of look like they have their own religion. Or they look like they're brainwashed. All hail plankton. All hail plankton. Another movie reference, SpongeBob the movie if you haven't seen it go watch it. Um they kind of look like they're either hypnotized, brainwashed or religion of some sort in the mornings because in the mornings um lots of people might be able to see them doing this ah. why are they all sitting like that that's just not how they sit so they're all sitting with their legs out like that and with their arms like that and sitting up and staring and sometimes closing their eyes and feeling it Touching their inner souls, I guess. It just looks very majestic and comfortable, to be honest. It looks really comfortable. Well, they are not religious. and They're not being brainwashed. And they do this in the morning because the morning is the coldest part of the day that's not night. Or the coldest part of the day uh, that has sun. So... Of course, they are, yeah, they, they do yoga, uh, and th they only do one position, and it's the sun worshiping position. So this is literally called sun worshiping, and I don't know if this has video or not. If it does, I really want it to. Okay, it does. So they sun worship, and it looks like that. Look at them. Look at them, man. They're sun worshiping. Thank you, Siren Dawn, uh, for the sub. In the middle of that, I appreciate I appreciate that. Uh, welcome. We're just looking at sun worshiping. Okay, there's no way to mute that. We're looking at sun worshiping lemurs. I'm playing it twice. It's not as consistent as I thought it would be, but this one's King Julian. Are you kidding me? Look at him. Look at him. Oh, I wish I had a better King Julian impression. It's almost good. It's almost there. But next time I talk about lamers, it'll be there. So trust me. So yeah, I just thought I would bring it to everyone's attention that, yeah, a lot of people know ring-tailed lemurs because of King Julian. A lot of people know ring-tailed lemurs because they're cute. When they think of lemur, they think of ring-tailed lemurs. Maybe they're like, huh, why are ring tails, lemurs, tails, striped and ringed? Um, by the way, I have to do stretch. Oh that, oh, that felt good. I love stretching. Or should I do a sun worshiping? Sun worship real quick. Turn my room to yellow and sun worship. Okay, all done. Um, yeah, none of this is to attract females. None of this is to attract any other lemur. It is literally to bring up their body temperature in the morning. And then when it gets too hot, they go in the trees and they bask in the, in the shadows all day <laughs> and cool down. So it's kind of weird that they don't, they don't like take the time to be cold. Like in the morning, sometimes I'm like, I kind of like being cold right now because I know it's going to be like 90 degrees later today. Fahrenheit, not Celsius, of course. Um, oh, the rings on the tail. That is also not to attract a female. 
because the females also have it. So, um, the rings on the tail are actually for communication between every lemur and not in like, oh, I like you. Oh, you like me? I like you too. No, it's like, yo, danger's coming. And then I'll stick straight up or something like that. And then everyone will be alerted. It's also to keep an eye on each other because the tail makes it easier to spot. So there's uh, a dog breed called a basset hound. And with all, what all basset hounds have, what all pure basset hounds have, are white tips on the end of their tails. Now what basset hounds were bred for by humans were to retrieve ducks, I'm pretty sure. If not, retrieve something while hunting. And I'm pretty sure it was like ducks or birds. Now, of course, when you retrieve ducks or birds, it's in the tall grass. And if it was just a human by itself, it'd be forever. That's why you always have a dog. They always take forever. I'd lose it like a golf ball. But, um, so yeah, it's for attracting or not attracting. The There's a white tip on the basset hound's tail to keep track of the dog as well. And you'll always see it because they always walk around with the tail up and you'll see them in the tall grass. And you'll just see like a white thing moving. <laughs> and so, um... Yeah, similar thing here. It's to keep track of one another and to communicate if alert to alert one another and stuff like that. So yeah, it's hilarious to watch them sunbathe and they're they're really cool. So I wish this video wasn't didn't have noise. I really wish it didn't have noise. But yeah, look at them, look at them. They're so adorable. These guys are so adorable. So, your uh, ringtail lemurs just got cuter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. I gotta skip that video. Come on, man. I gotta. S there we go. So, welcome on in, new people. We're on our last segment. And then I'm free to talk whenever, if you guys want to talk. <laughs> but, yeah, we're on the next segment, uh, last segment. And if you missed the announcement at the beginning of the video, because you just tuned in halfway through or just now, there's a chair behind me, and it's got rocks on it. And these rocks have significance because on Sunday at 9 p.m., we will be having our final episode of science hd for the season because <laughs> it's season finale i'd wanted to trick you thinking we were done but um we're not done we're gonna go strong we're just gonna start school up so it might be a hot minute before we get in the flow of things uh so season finale of science hd season one finale of science hd is coming sunday this sunday it's not even a week from now this sunday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So, ho hopefully you're not doing anything on Sunday night if you're in America. Um, hopefully you're not doing anything Monday morning if you're in Australia. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no abandoning. I'll be back this year for Season 2. And in Season 2, well, on the finale, we're going to open up all these rocks. This rock right here will be smashed into bits. This rock right here will also be smashed into bits because they're both geodes. Of course, there are four more of those geodes, and they were all found in Indiana by my sister. And, uh, yes. S uh, Science HD Geode Smashing Part 2 is in the season finale, and then we're going to be talking about some other things we have yet to decide to talk about, but I'll be sure to make it better. Probably make a game for it, too. Um, like... Maybe I'll make, like, a noise game. So, um, I'll be, like, I'll play a sound, and then i put four images of animals up on the screen, and then I'll have Rose guess which one it is, plus you guys, of course. And, yeah. So, yeah. Science HD episode, or season finale, episode 13 is the season finale. I could make it extra long, too. We could. Probably not, but it probably will. It'll probably just be long because I have five 
six geodes to smash open. So, unfortunately, Rose won't be in person, but she will be there. So, if that's the only reason why you watch this show, good. Congrats, you can come back. Uh, but yes. Uh, yeah. I just wanted to throw that out there for all my beautiful peoples. So, this last one might be obvious of what I'm about to talk about. I just want to talk about it because Rose was here, actually, the, a couple days ago. And then I was, like, sitting there. And I look over to her and I was like, how do bed bugs find beds? <laughs> I'm like, yo, how do bed bugs find beds, man? You ever think about that? Because, like, I've never had bed bugs. I know people get bed bugs and I don't live like the cleanest lifestyle in the world but yeah I've never had bed bugs so if they like stumble upon beds by chance I feel like I should have gotten one by now you know what I mean so I'm obviously doing something to deter bed bugs or not deter but not attract bed bugs and so that like always got me and then I asked her I was like yo how do how do bed bugs find beds? And this is probably like a stupid question, but I'm curious. And so um, she was like, you know what? I have no idea. And I was like, okay, I'm I'm science HDing this. Science HDing this. Um, so yes, we're gonna we're gonna figure that out right now. Why do bed bugs only, or why do they find beds? Like how? Not why. Basically, this is what a bed bug looks like. <coughs> I think there's two species or subspecies of bed bugs, which is not a lot, especially compared to a tick. It looks a lot like a tick, but don't worry, it's not a tick. Even though tick happens, this is not a tick. Speaking of tick happens, another thing I wanted to announce for season two, if we get enough traction out there, or enough people interested, um, which I actually will take a poll on it right now. Interested in hold on. I'm gonna take a five minute poll. So tick happens was a phrase I made up. That's probably already um, it's probably already out there, but I love it so much that I'm going to make it into a sticker one day. But speaking of stickers, I'm wondering if you guys would be interested in possibly like picking up a sticker. Of course, I would make them as cheap as I can with shipping and I'd eventually make them into packs and then I would have more than like five options and... I think I would just have more fun making the sticker and keeping it for myself than I would actually selling it. So I wouldn't do it for profit. Um, basically, a sticker of this size would be the first one for Science HD. The size, of, I have sized it out and I've actually ordered a sample pack. And so here's what a sticker might look like for Science HD. Um, it's got a bumper sticker. Slap that on a bumper. Yeah. Um, I'm making one. I want to make one into Tick Happens. I've already got. Uh, a prototype out there and uh, I have not ordered it because I want to add some art because Rose is a really good artist and I have some good ideas this is a prototype this will never be printed again because I have a better design for this and it looks cool but I have better design so if you're interested please vote in the poll uh, I'm gonna have more polls and I'm just letting you know I'm serious bruh I'm serious dog so yeah you don't have to say yes or no. I'm not saying you have to buy it or anything. I might even do a giveaway where I just give away stickers rather than actually, like, sell them. So, like, purely giveaway. So, it's just because I love Tick Happens. There will be a Tick Happens sticker, and I can't keep it a secret anymore, man. I can't. And I forgot to announce this at the beginning, so. <laughs> season 2 will have stickers, hopefully. Season 1 will. This is this technically a Season 1 sticker, and this is going to be rare. This is super rare. Super rare. But anyways, back to bed bugs. These beds be bugging. Beds bugging, man. Um, beds bugging. 
for show. So, uh, I looked into bed bugs, right? And I was like, what are they? First of all, I'm not, I don't, if you get bit by one, it's like, is it, how much does it hurt? Is it form a rash? Like apparently bed bugs are blood feeding insects from the genus Cymex. No. Blood feeding, I'm out. No, if it feeds on blood, I'm out. That's some shit you make up in a comic book. Part of my French, again, this is such a... Wow, I gotta... Mm -mm. Nope, swerve. Swerve. Swerve, I'm out. I'm out, swerve. Swerve, if you feed on blood, that's, that's something you write in a comic book, man. I'm out. Certain type of bats, come on, man. Uh, ticks, nope. Mosquitoes, what? Nobody likes any of the things that feed on blood, man. It is like gross. <laughs> it is gross. Thank you for the bits. Thank you. Thank you for the bits. I'd add them silently so it's not like spamming. Because someone could spam bits. And I'd rather it be like a silent spam so the YouTube video doesn't go to crap. By the way, if, you, if you're interested in the YouTube video, I have a YouTube. Science HD. Boom. Right there. That's YouTube. Uh, shouts out to my people who watch on YouTube. What up, homies? Um, but anyways, bed bugs, they, they feed on blood and they are attracted to things because insects have an, have an acute sense of smell, but they don't have noses, right? So, um, they have antennas and like, s like smell organ things to help them smell. So they smell differently. So if you're trying to relate yourself to a bed bug and how good they smell versus how good you smell, Try not to think of it like, wow, they inhale all of that. No, it's like how air molecules interact with them in a way, which is technically the same as us, but like different, like they're not inhaling things constantly is what I'm trying to say, man. Um, so yes, I'm seeing that someone had to deal with bed bugs in chat. If anyone else had to deal with bed bugs in chat, let me know. Seriously, let me know. I want to know what your experience is like. So typeity type type, don't be afraid. If you want to DM me, I'll keep your name anonymous and tell you and say the story. So bed bug stories would love to hear them. Um, so basically, they are attracted to warmth, blood, and CO2, apparently. I don't know how accurate that is, but that's what they're attracted to. Let's see the result of this poll, by the way. Interested in stickers? We have 100% yes. Um... Since this is a small show, I don't know how many stickers I'd actually print, but who knows? Regardless, um, they're not really attracted to dirt and grime like many would think, like bed bugs are. They're not that attracted to dirt and grime, but the clutter in your house might offer them more hiding spots. I know that was a nasty inhale, but whatever. Um, so, clutter offers them hiding spots and... I think stank might also attract them. I'm not quite sure how accurate that is either. Now, they look exactly like ticks. They look exactly like ticks, but they're different, and they do not carry diseases like ticks do. Now, we've already talked about how tick happens. We've already talked about how ticks have... One tick called Lone Star Tick has... A disease that can make you vegetarian by basically making you intolerant to red meat. Maybe including chicken. I'm not sure if chicken's included. So a chickentarian <laughs> is what I'd be. I'd just be eating chicken all the time, man. Um, yeah, if you want to read more about that or hear more about that, I don't know what episode it was, but Tick Happens was the segment. And uh, yeah. These guys don't do that. So that's good. That's a bonus. That's like the only plus. But if the only plus of this bug is a more deep negative of a different insect, it's kind of bad. So there's no plus with this. So all in all, bed bugs really like the smell of dirty laundry and dirty furniture when it comes down to it. Um, and of course, if you already have them, if you already, 
if you already uh, see them in your area, just know that if they are alerted or if they are um, if they are uh, in danger, they will they will release pheromones into the air that do not smell good, especially if there's a lot of um, especially if there's a lot of bed bugs. I'm gonna read chat real quick and come back to that. I had to deal with bed bugs once. Worst thing ever. I bet. Oh God, we have some bed bugger. We have some bed bug victims in here. I had once. I had once when I was young. We had to take all the laundry from the house and bug bomb it to get rid of them. After my aunt and uncle visited, it was an absolute nightmare. I can't imagine. I can't imagine having to do that. I lived in a townhouse and got them from my neighbor. Never again will I share a wall with someone. Oh, God. I'm living in a townhouse in like a week. You, oh, I swear to God. I swear to God, by the way. Um, I stayed in a hotel once that had bed bugs. And it was the worst thing. They bit me so much. And they, and they drink your blood. I'm just going to say that. And they drink your blood. Something out there has drink your blood. And a mosquito has drank of blood. So I guess it's not that bad. Got a lurk. Hope the stream's good. Thank you for giving this show attention. It, it needs it, and I, I appreciate it. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for everyone that's just here, too. So, bed bugs. All in all, if you don't have them, keep your stuff clean and tidy. It's it sounds stupid and cliche, I guess, but I guess that's the best way to get not have them. But um, yeah, they're attracted to to to, to grossness. Um, more bed bugs. If there's more, the worst that their pheromone fragrance that they like to spew out of themselves when they're alerted is gonna be. So like, let's say you have four bed bugs. And they get alerted. It's probably not going to be that worse of a smell. Or that bad of a smell. Now let's say if you have 500. This smell is going to be reeking. So yes. It's it's bad. And they're, they're overall just terrible. Terrible things to have. It's so inconvenient. Um, but it won't die. So that's good. Um, I'm reading chat again. Fleas are insane too. Those could be just as bad, if not worse, than bed bugs, depending on the situation. I've never had to deal with fleas either. Uh, should I talk about fleas next? Oh man, I do have a parasitology class coming up uh, this semester, so actually this might be a good segue into season two. If I talk about fleas next week too, this might be a good segue for me into season two. There's gonna be a lot of parasites in season two. Gas and burn is back and he says um i have mercury in my blood would the bed bugs die or would they become super bugs so are you asking me would the mercury in your blood wait first of all is that like a statement you have mercury in your blood or is it if i did you forget the if um but anyways if are you asking me if Mercury in your blood would either make them worse or give them a mutation to make them better. I think it would probably be the first one. Okay. First house I ever lived in, alone with my roommate. We got two kittens, and they came with fleas. Oh, God. Our house wasn't... Oh, no. Wait. I didn't know fleas could actually, like, stay in the house, man. I still have scars on my ankles from where they ate at my ankles so bad. What? Oh, my. I later learned in life I'm allergic to bug bites. Wow. And then Gatsenburn is claiming he has mercury in his blood because he has the symptoms of mercury poisoning. Uh, I'd say seek a medical professional, por favor, please. However you say please in Australian, JK, that's a joke. Um, although I don't know how I would say please in Australian accent. Please. Please. <laughs> place uh so yeah please go seek a med medical person probably a doctor in blood i wonder what can you like study blood that's a good question there's gotta be someone that like focuses in blood 
I feel like blood's just like that. All right, this is this is what this is what Google's for. What do you call a person that studies blood? Hematologist. I should have known that. I'm so stupid. I should have known that, man. Ah, uh, I should have known that. <laughs> I feel. I knew I was gonna kick myself once I saw that. In the middle of me typing that, I was like, I'm gonna. I am streaming myself making a dumb mistake that I already know the answer to. Yeah, no. Um, I know my mom texted me about the fle the the pet bugs thing. She said, I'd say they're not attracted to grossness when people on your Discord get them. I'd s wait. I'd not say they are attracted to grossness when people on your Discord get them. Oh, okay. So I didn't mean to offend anyone if you've ever had bed bugs. Because, for example, someone got bed bugs because their neighbor got bed bugs. Um, yeah, I guess. I don't, I don't think I offended anyone. If I offended anyone, just let me know. Bed bugs, there, I feel like there's no rhyme or rhythm either. I have no idea. It's just the common symptom, or not common symptoms. I'm thinking about you, uh, gas and burn. Thinking about symptoms. All in all, I'm not trying to offend anyone, man. I'm just saying bed. I'm just reading what the internet says about bed bugs and how to get them because I was curious on how you even get bed bugs. And that, my friend, is all I have to say about that before I get canceled on bed bugs. If that makes any sense. DM me if I may, if I offended you. That's all. Um, just because you have bed bugs does not make you a gross person. Beautiful. That, I'm going to put that on a sticker. If you have bed... If you, I'm thinking of a sticker. If you have bed bugs... <laughs> I'm going to make that one in a sticker, I guess burn. If I have bed bugs, at least someone will be sleeping with me crying face <laughs> yeah so uh i think that wraps it up for me that's all that's all the segments i have that's it man that's it dog i didn't have any games this week but next episode i will definitely bring the games man i will bring the games and i think i'm gonna do the sound one where i pick us i have sounds lined up turn into buttons and I press it and it's going to be one of the four animals I have on screen. I think that's going to be fire. It's going to be a fire episode. Um, so last announcements or last comments in chat. If y'all want to talk in chat, uh, talk to me. That is, I read something that I skipped over and that I, I didn't say it loud because I didn't want to get off topic was you should do a giveaway for the prototype sticker. Whoever orders a sticker pack has a chance of getting the prototype st signed in their pack. That's a good idea. That's a really good idea. I just want to say it loud so it's forever recorded that that's a really good idea. Um, notice how it's the same font as... Oh, man. my! If I had OCD, I'd want to line that up so bad. Look at that. I want to line that up so bad. But anyways, um, great idea. I'm reading that we need to get you a legit name tag. What's wrong with this? My name is Science HD. What's wrong with that? Nothing. I don't think it. I don't see anything wrong with that. Nothing wrong with a little paper and tape. Um, but no, if I actually did have a patch here, I'd, I'd make it. It's like... I don't know if you can see that it's like graphing paper and it has those lines i'd make them have that line when i get it so i'm like that it's like that'd be cool um and then any more comments no more comments and uh everyone have a good night and don't let the bed bugs bite <laughs> but <-dum> <laughs> there we go that's it baby that's it thank you so much for everyone that resub today and have sub today which I think they're all resubs, so I appreciate it just as much. Um, my name is Nolan, and this is Science HD, baby. 
season one finale is on Sunday. Um, I'm going to remind everyone of my Discord and Instagram. So if you're not on either of those, get on it, man. All you have to do is click the links and bios and search. Use that brain meat of yours. Search or look up Science HD on Instagram or YouTube. And uh, you've just been bitten with the scientific bug. <laughs> Jesper, I need you to DM me all your ideas for a catchphrase because the only reason why we haven't printed off the sticker, the new one, with the new design on it, is because we don't have a phrase that we can say at the end. Because you've just been scientifically served is almost perfect, but I want perfect, and I don't want to sound picky, but it's like I want this to be like permanent too, so I'm like, I do want to be picky. I don't know. I need more ideas though because that's the only idea we have, and it's your idea, so uh, yeah. If anyone has any ideas, message me. You'll find me. You'll find me. So, uh, yeah. Let me find the song. I don't know why I closed it out, but I closed it out. And then, uh, yeah. Have a good night. Don't let the bugs but Don't let... <sighs> you know what I mean. Y'all have a splendid day. Thank mm -hmm. you.